Hello everyone. In this video, uh, we are going to take a look at how to apply what we've learned about complex phasers quadrature signals into a real application, which is an IQ demodulation. Um, a demodulation means that uh, we want to uh, take the incoming RF uh, signal as an input we want to mix it down to a lower frequency, uh, filter it, and convert it from an analog signal to a digital signal for post-processing. So what you're seeing here is a very common uh, demodulation uh, receiver architecture. Here you have uh, two mixers. Uh, the XBP uh, of T is the incoming signal. And uh, you have two mixers, the uh, uh, in-phase channel mixer and the, the quadrature phase channel mixer. And you can see that the LO of those two mixers, they're coming from the same source, but 90 degree different in phase. So the mixers, they mix down the incoming RF signal to a baseband signal. And uh, uh, after the low pass filter, uh, only the baseband signal around the DC uh, frequency area uh, would remain. And then we do an A to D conversion. And we get two arrays of uh, data, uh, one for in phase, one for quadrature phase. They stored in computer memories for post-processing. Uh, the array of I and the Q are the data the computer uh, usually it's a, a some kind of a, a DSP a hardware that would use to compute um, and generate the Fourier uh, generates the, the FFT uh, spectrum. So let's take a look at the how a mixer works. A mixer takes a FRF as an input uh, and also the FLO. Uh, LO stands for local oscillator. So when uh, a mixer mixes two incoming signals, uh, you get a summation of their frequency and you get a subtraction of the two frequencies. Show us here. Uh, usually uh, the summation of the two inputs, FRF plus FLO, gets filtered out because they are out of band. And what's remaining is really the difference between the FRF and the FLO. Uh, we also call this term FIF, and IF stands for intermediate frequency, uh, also known as baseband signal. This is the signal of our interest, and it typically contains the information that we need to decode. If we plot the, um, the spectrum a response of our incoming RF signal X baseband, and uh, we get a um, we get one component in the frequency positive side of the frequency axis, and we get another term on the negative side of the frequency axis. Now let's say we mix this input signal with the in phase. Uh, mixer, which is the cosine wave. So based on what we just saw, how the mixer works, uh, we get a summation and we get a subtraction. Because the because the frequent the LO frequency and the, the RF input uh, frequency are reasonably close, if we sub subtract two, we will get a term whose frequency that's uh, very close to DC. And after the low pass filter, uh, only this baseband uh, spectrum will remain. And the higher frequency term um, on both ends, both sides of the spectrum gets filtered out. Here I'm using the red dotted line to represent for the mixed product of the negative uh, component, uh, frequency component. And I'm using a solid blue line to represent the 
um, frequency component on the positive spectrum. Uh, very similar to the in-phase mixing. For the quadrature phase mixing, this is the same uh, incoming RF tone. And if we mix it with a sine wave, uh, this is what we get. So as you can see, the for the negative spectrum, the frequency component that used to be at minus Fc gets mixed up uh, up to minus two times uh, of the carrier and down to dc. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, for the positive side component, it get mixed up and mixed down. Uh, but notice that here, uh, because of the uh, conjugate symmetry of the sine wave, the amplitude gets flipped. Unlike in the in-phase scenario, mixing scenario, uh, they are merely symmetrical to each other. And after the low-pass filter, only the DC term remains. If we take the in-phase and the quadrature phase, uh, what's being uh, filtered, the term that's been, that remains after filtering, if we take that and that, and we add them together, uh, as you will see that the, the red dotted line, which represents for the mixing product of the negative frequency component, they are equal in magnitude, but opposite in uh, the direction. So they get canceled out. But the, um, but the solid blue line, which represents for the mixing product of the positive frequency component, they add it up. So the result would be twice of the uh, what used to be the solid blue line. So here something strange is happening. Uh, from visually, we can see that if we add this spectrum with that, we get um, this as an out output. But if you look at the uh, representation of this term, it really is i uh, of f minus j times q of f. So something strange is going on. We're trying to add these two terms, but in reality, we are actually subtract and uh, uh, multiply the, the quadrature term with a j. And I will explain later on what, what, was, what was really happening here. What was really happening here was that um, the frequency domain mixing, it actually happens in a three-dimensional space. But if we plot them in a two-dimensional coordinates, we're actually looking at the projection of this, a three-dimensional phenomenon in a two-dimensional space. So to, to truly understand what is happening, to, uh, to truly understand the real reality, we need to plot everything here in three dimension. So this is the in-phase uh, component in three dimension. Here, the frequency axis is pointing out of the paper. And we can see uh, for the in-phase component, it's uh, in the same plane constructed by the real and the frequency axis. And this is the quadrature uh, phase mixing component after being filtered. And this component is actually in the plane that's orthogonal to the in-phase. So if if the, these if these components they're in different plane, um, which means they there's no part of it overlap. So we cannot do algebras. We need to do something that brings them to the same plane first, and then we can add or subtract. So the solution here really is uh, it's it, it's quite uh, simple. What what we do is that we rotate the quadrature um, component uh, by 90 degree clockwise direction. And uh, this can be done simply by introduce a 90 degree delay in phase um, in the quadrature component. 
So after the rotation, the quadrature components becomes um, this one, which lies in the uh, the plane constructed by the real and the frequency axis. And uh, 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 this term would be minus j times q of f. Now, if we add this term with the in-phase component, we can see since the two of them are occupying the same plane, so we can do algebra. And uh, the negative frequency component cancels each other and the positive frequency component uh, combines. In fact, they double. And uh, hence, we get our uh, desired result, which is i of uh, f subtract j times q of f.